Well, hey YouTube, welcome to the Friday Technique video follow-up to my Wednesday voice teacher reaction video of Soyoung's You Raise Me Up. And today I'm talking about how do you sing high notes, really strong high notes without straining. Okay, and there's a couple of ways that are really, really important to do. And uh, so what I want to do is follow up in this series of uh, Wednesday voice teacher reaction, Friday technique follow-up. So I want to show you what she's doing uh, or what she did in the video on You Raise Me Up. And I went over extensively in that video, which I'll also link to. But um, I want to show you what she's doing and I'm going to show you men and you women. And I'm excited about this one because it's going to be fun. Because as a little special guest in a little while, I'm going to bring my wife in, who's an amazing singer, amazing teacher. And uh, she's going to demonstrate for you women um, how So Young does those crazy notes up there. And I, think, I know you're going to get a lot out of it. And we'll give you some, some tools and some, some techniques and things so you can, you know, develop that stuff on your own. And for your guy, you guys, since I'm a guy, I'm going to demonstrate a little bit and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I should probably introduce myself. Hey, I'm Mike Goodrich. And uh, boy, that was a long intro to say, hey, I'm Mike Goodrich. But uh, creator of the Inner Singer, the Inner Singer podcast, uh, Inner Singer Technique Series for Men, and soon to be Inner Singer Technique Series for Women. Mm, it's kind of a mouthful. Anyway, thrilled to have you here. Thank you so much for subscribing and uh, all the likes and the comments and uh, all the, the growth of my channel really quickly, which is I really, really appreciate. Uh, I have been have not been doing YouTube very long and i uh, been teaching forever in a day, but I uh, haven't been doing YouTube very long. So anyway, I really appreciate it. So let's let's jump in, shall we? Uh, so how do we build these crazy high notes? How do we get like literally crazy high notes that we love to sing and people really want to hear? Well, I had a, a wonderful mentor years and years ago. I had many, but uh, one got me into teaching. His name was Seth Riggs. Uh, terrific guy, wonderful guy, amazing teacher, and a dear friend years ago. We uh, met probably 1989, I think it was. And uh, I watched probably hundreds of lessons that he taught. And that got me started teaching. And uh, so I owe a tremendous amount to him for encouraging me and helping me uh, and never asking anything for it. So he's uh, a, a dear guy. But anyway, he said many, many amazing things to me, but he said one thing one time to me, and I only remember him saying it one time, and I never heard him say it to anybody else or say it before. Now, it may have been a thing he said all the time and only once to me, but it was odd because I was around him all the time. But it really made sense. He was working with a student, and the student's voice was kind of breaking and cracking. I can't remember if it was a man or a woman, but it doesn't matter because it happens to both. And uh, singing in a kind of a real strong low voice, or chest voice, and then kind of breaking and cracking and trying to get up into the higher register and was discouraged. The student was discouraged because uh, he or she couldn't do it. And uh, was asking, well, why, why can't I get up there high and why do I have to sing these little tiny notes and all this kind of stuff? And, and Seth said three little phrases that I will always remember. He said, first, you thin it out, you hook it up, and you fill it in. And that really, really struck me. Now, it may not be striking you the same way, but I'm going to explain to you why it's important and what it means. So, to get these crazy high notes, we don't necessarily always have them from birth. I, I didn't. I mean, I think we have the potential, obviously, from birth. But we, we may not just, like, roll out of bed one day and start singing great high notes like So Young. Or like Dimash, or like anybody, right? I certainly did not. Um, I sang in my chest voice, and I could not get out of it. I had no vibrato. It kind of felt awful when I sang. Um, I couldn't sing soft. I couldn't sing that loud. I had good pitch. I had that going for me, and I was a good imitator. I had that going to <laughs> had that going for me. I could imitate. Um, sometimes to my demise. But anyway, so what does this thin it out, hook it up, fill it in thing mean? Well, for me to develop my high notes, and for many, 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 many of my students to develop their high notes, we're in a strong chest voice, right? We don't know how to get out of it. We don't know how to get from that to our high notes. 
our only concept of singing at that point is really chess voice. So we have our concept of ah, and that's kind of how it feels and how. Now all of a sudden now we're demanded from a song to sing this note. Well, our only frame of reference, the only wiring in our brain is chest voice. Well, chest voice, that's an A flat I just played, A flat four. So for you women, you could think in terms of maybe, oh, an E flat five for a second. Now, if, if your only frame of reference is to sing in chest voice, then your frame of reference is how the voice feels when you're in your chest voice. So for me, it was down here, you know. I'm in my chest and somebody plays this note. I'm thinking chest voice because it's my only frame of reference. So what do I do? I go, ah, ah. And I think, how am I going to sing that note when my only concept of singing sensationally is down here? So what happens immediately? We get scared. We open our mouth really wide. Larynx starts to go up. And we go into yelling mode because we're trying to figure out how we're going to get this heavy weight up this hill or this low way of singing up that high, right? So, what does the first phrase, thin it out, help us do? It helps us drop all of that feeling of, ah, oh, I got to get that way up high. And so we think, okay, maybe I don't have to take that up high. Maybe I can take a lighter sound. So an exercise that works really, really well, it's called a pharyngeal exercise. And it's because it kind of brings the voice forward-ish. Okay? And one of my favorites is to use nay, N-A-Y, and to exaggerate that sound with a character voice and drop all of the weight out of it. So let's say, for example, my frame of reference down here is ah, and I'm thinking, how am I going to get that up? But all of a sudden, I, I take that nay and I say, nay, 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 nay. Ridiculous, right? Ridiculous sound. Not going to go out there and sing like that. But all of a sudden, I've dropped all of the excess vocal cord baggage and weight out of my voice. Now, what if I say, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do that on that little nay. And let's see if I can, let's see if I can make it on just a sound that is not even really associated in my mind with singing. It's a sound. And I go, nay, 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 nay. Oh, man. Okay, well, it's not great. Nobody's going to pay me to do that, right? Well, I get paid as a teacher, but nobody's going to pay me to sing like that. But what was really, really good about that? I thinned out my chest voice. And I, thin, I thickened up my mix from what could have been falsetto to a little bit of chord closure. You'll notice that wasn't falsetto. Let me do it again. Nay, 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 silly sound. I thinned it out. I hooked it up. Now I'm out of my chest voice into my mix. It's a nice light mix. But now I'm going through my first bridge up to the A-flat-4. Whereas before, I couldn't even think that note. So now i got to fill it in. Now, sometimes filling it in takes a little more than like five minutes. You know what I mean? It, it takes days, weeks, months, depending on the student. And I really literally have had... Um, somebody be able to fill it in during the first lesson, somebody taking a few weeks, a few months, a year or two, 
I don't want to put any kind of a time limit on it or really any sort of a time in your mind. It takes what it takes, but it's really worth it. But the first step, thin it out. Second step, hook it up. Third, third step, fill it in. Don't try and fill it in first. In other words, if you don't really, if you're not used to singing high notes or you don't have high notes per se right now, uh, then don't try and go from zero to 60 in one second. Thin it out, hook it up, and fill it in. So now, what if I did that on a mum? Say, well, if I did that on a neigh, maybe I can do it on another sound. What if I said mum? But I'm not going to go mum, 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 mum. I'm not going to use that. What if I go mum, 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 Oh, my gosh, I made it. Now, it's a, it's, a, it's a light mix, obviously. Mum, 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 But it starts to hold. So I've got the first two things, right? I have thinned it out. I have hooked it up. That is analogous to going to the gym and not being very strong. But having a personal trainer that provides you a workout based on your body type and where you want and your goals, right? Where you want to go. And gives you the, the right weights to lift and educates you with the proper form. The more you do that, the stronger you get. The stronger you get, the more weight you lift. The more weight you lift, the stronger you get. So it becomes this really cool, you know, uh, synergistic circle that just the stronger you get, the more weight you lift, the more weight you lift, the stronger you get. That analogy carries into the singing. The, the more, let's say, air pressure your vocal cords can hold, hold back without bringing in compensatory muscles, the stronger your sound is going to be. So if all you can do in the beginning without bringing in compensatory muscles is nay, 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 mum, 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 that's totally fine. It will get stronger and stronger and stronger the more you do it with the intent of allowing it to get stronger and stronger and stronger. Okay? Really, really important concept for you all to get and understand is that you thin it out, you hook it up, and you fill it in. Don't care how long it takes to fill it in. Just keep working at it, keep playing with it, and eventually it starts filling in. I have seen amazing thing happen, amazing, amazing thing, mm -mm, amazing things happen. Number one, my own voice. I could never do this stuff before. And uh, gosh, hundreds and hundreds, I don't know, maybe thousands over this period of time, students that I've had and singing teachers that I've taught as well. Many, 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 many all over the world. Okay, um, quick little edit. I forgot this exercise and I wanted to show it to you. Now, this is something that I really used a lot to develop my own high notes. And I've used it with countless students as well. Uh, it's, it's getting up into the higher register with a light compression on a very, very soft sound so that you thin it out and you hook it up. And then from the top, while you're already up there, you begin to fill it in. And let me show you how that works. For example, if I used something called the squeaky door, squeaky door, squeaky hinge, because it sounds like that. It's this kind of a thing. And what that is, the very edge of my chords are coming together with this kind of a thing. It's not a hum. Although it's close to a hum, but it's a little bit more on the chord. It's probably a stupid thing to say, but it's, it's a little bit more pressed. Almost like starting on a fry tone. Or like a baby cries. But play around with this idea. Okay, and a hum would work pretty much just as well if that's all you can do. And you would hum with your lips together, teeth apart like this. So I'm going to take it up to an A flat four. I'm going to land on the A flat four. And then from the squeaky door I'll use, from the squeaky door, I'm going to gently part my lips a little bit 
and allow a, a, a sound. And I'm going to use the sound uh. So I'm going to go from the squeaky door to a, a little bit of an uh sound like this. Watch. See, I hardly have my mouth open at all. Now that is chord closure, head voice. There's no falsetto. So what I can do once I'm able to do that is I can begin to fill that in. Now again, you don't try to go from zero to 60. What you want to do is treat the voice like it's very buoyant and elastic. And what you do when you're up there, you only go as far as it'll go without breaking, cracking, or whatever. So you And you'll get very sensitive to being able to lean into this Men and women, this is for both of you, be able to lean into this. So I'm at an A flat four for a man. So a woman, you know, you gals can do this like E flat five, E five, F five. You can do it lower too. You can do it in your first bridge, B flat, B, C. That would be B flat four, B four, and C five. So you can play around with that. And the guys, you guys can do it higher than that as well. You can do it lower as well. But it's mainly really to build in those high notes to get that release, right? You thin it out, you hook it up, and then to begin to fill it in. So, let's say I can only go this far. I go. Then I'm satisfied with that because I've got chord closure, I've got head voice, and now I've got something I can work with. It's like being able to go to the gym and lift a lightweight like we talked about. And then as you can, you begin to lean a little bit more. Until you can kind of play with it. <clears throat> got a little gunk. But you get the idea. So you've got the chord closure. You've got a sound that's holding in your upper register, right? You've got head voice. And then you begin to sit into it a little bit more. Find a little bit more leverage there. Play with it a little bit more. Feel the elasticity and the buoyancy of it. Go kind of back and forth with it. And the next thing you know, you're crescendoing into a much louder sound without having to go from the bottom up. In other words, without having to get in out of your lower register into your upper register. So, that's a really great exercise. If, now, if you need to start from the bottom and work up, then do that. You can do something like this arpeggio and just stop there and rest on it and play with it that way. You know, you can just... Like that. See? So either one of those, you can start right on it, or you can work your way up to it. But the idea is to start with a nice, easy, thin sound, thin it out, hook it up, and then fill it in as you can. Okay? And don't be in a hurry. Be, be patient with this. Okay, now I'm going to bring on my wife, Jennifer, who uh, is fabulous. She's a terrific singer, songwriter, and teacher. And uh, she's going to show you all these amazing things that... Uh, so Young did, and we're going to talk about that, okay, and give you some tools so you can go develop the same thing in your voice. Okay, so we'll see you right now. Okay, guys, we're back. This is my lovely wife, Jennifer, that I introduced you to a few Hi. minutes ago. Fabulous singer, songwriter, um, and teacher, and she's going to demonstrate some of these fun things that So Young did in her version of You Raise Me Up, which I will link to in the description because you guys should really watch that. But anyway, then that, this will make a lot of sense. She's it'll, amazing. It'll make sense anyway, because what we're going to show you is a real, real strong high notes, like the title of this video. And high notes for a woman, high notes for a man as well, but high notes for a woman certainly need to be in a mix. So when you're singing your first bridge or your second bridge, it's mix all the way, okay? You can't be yelling your chest voice. So we're going to do a couple of the highlights that really got the audience's attention. Well, we're not. I, Jennifer is. <laughs> Um, uh, they got the audience's Direct. attention in, uh, in You Raise Me Up. And then we're going to kind of give a couple of exercises on how you guys can do this and build this into your voice as well. So the first one we're going to do is... And the lyric is more than me. And the way she sang it was, 
she's on an F sharp five in a strong mix, which is above the second bridge coming back down to the E natural. And so it's more than me. Not impressive at all in my voice because it's in my first bridge, but it's past Jennifer's second bridge. So it's more than me. And you'll hear a little meh in the, in the E vowel on that E natural five. Go for it. More than me. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Tone it down. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's killing me here. So yeah. So it's plenty loud. You can, you can all uh, hear that. Um, so that's awesome. So that's an F sharp five, really, really belty strong mix down to an E natural five. Okay. And that was, if you go watch the video, that's the line, one of the lines. So and another one is the title of the song, You Raise Me Up. And it goes, you raise me up. So raise is on an E natural five. And it's an A vowel, so she's not going to go, you raise. We're going to sing an A in an E position. Raise, like you raise me up. Up there. Okay, bad edit, because <laughs> Jennifer actually does not know this song. I showed her about one second before. <laughs> one second before we did this thing, so we needed a second to relearn this. I know Josh Groban's version, but not yeah, her. But, but she we're not, all over the place. But we're not doing Josh Groban's, right? Yeah. So go for it. You raise. And that's the raise on the E natural up to the F sharp five, back to the D on the word up. That's awesome. Now, do you want to do this one? The I am strong. How does that go again? This got a whole lot of attention um, because she sort of stops. She goes up to the F sharp five on an I, which will be more of an uh as far as the vowels go. And she goes, I am strong. I, again, I'm just learning these, so it's... She's just learning these, but you can do it. Go what for it. What is it again? I, I am strong. Okay, bring it down, big deal. That was awesome. <laughs> and that's the F sharp five. Back to the D again. Now, the one that got... Now, those are great. And we're going to show you, you know, how you can develop this as well in just a second. So, one of the ones that got the most attention was this, this thing she did here. She's, she's basically basically saying more than I am, and she's going to the D5, E5, F sharp 5, then to the G5, then to the A5. So what she's doing is she's going, more than I am, more than I am, more than I am. Again, not impressive for me, but you remember that? I'll try. Okay, go for it. More than I am. More than I am. More than I am. Yeah, that's killer. That's awesome. Up to the A, natural five. So you got the F sharp five, the G five, the A natural five. That's fun. It's Back fun down to, to the D. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, when, ladies, when you can do this, it's really freaking fun. Super fun. And I mean, really free and exciting. That's why they do it. I mean, it's just, you know, it's crazy fun. I'm so I, I just learned that run, but it's super fun. Yeah, it's crazy. So the way you learn to do that is one of my favorite exercises is the NAY and AY. I did it earlier when I was doing it, but now we're going to hear it done well. Uh, <laughs> and I would do it on this arpeggio from G flat. Let's see. One, two, G flat, three to D flat five, and it goes like this. And you take a neigh and you exaggerate the sound. Neigh, 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 neigh. Kind of like a character voice. And what it does is it thins out the chest and thickens up the mix. So here's what it sounds like. Just, just exaggerate a little, not too much. See now. Now go ahead and actually don't exaggerate much and do it a, do it kind of like with your normal voice. <laughs> See how it starts. <laughs> and she's already at an E natural five. So as you know, she can like probably go up to high C like that. Well, you can actually yeah. go up to high C like that. Uh, but let's pretend for you ladies that don't 
<laughs> no, that's okay. Let's pretend for you ladies that don't have that right now, strong. Can you do it? Um, I'm gonna another exercise that you would do is from the top, top down, and do it as if you're learning it. You kind know, of, your your voice is just kind of starting just, to connect. Exactly, you're just kind of getting it. Nay, 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 nay. Good again. So do it even softer up top because some women don't have right. much at all. Okay. Go. See, now if you're just starting out and developing this, you might not have much power up there. But remember, the whole thing is you thin it out, you hook it up, and you fill it in, like we talked about in the beginning. So just do this. Just do that kind of lightly. Just that. If that's all you have, then that's what you work with. And now do that again, and as you're doing it, do this. Build it. Yeah. Build it a little bit. Go. Okay. I feel like I'm in Star Wars. Bring it down, baby. <laughs> um, that's the idea. Now you're not going to be able to do that out of the chute, but that's on a D flat five, and that's the mix. So the two things that you can do. On an A, and you're just trying to keep the chords together, just trying to stay connected. You don't care how much volume I have, how much power you have in the beginning, okay? And the other thing you can do it, is from the top down. It sure does. You're starting on like a D flat five and working the octave down and starting on the Ne and continuing up. See, and it might only be like that. Now do that again, just like that. Stay like that. Good. Now drop into it. Give me a normal one, not to exaggerate it at all. And then it becomes that. Okay, so that's an F5. So um, that was awesome. Thanks, Eddie. That was great. Great. So um, okay, I'm probably going to do another bad edit. Back to <laughs> me saying goodbye. But uh, this is awesome. So anyway, bad edit coming up, and we'll see you guys soon. Thanks. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and you got a lot out of that. And um, do all this stuff. It really, really helps. And remember, thin it out, hook it up, fill it in, okay? And all these notes will be there for you, waiting. But just got to be patient, okay? Sometimes we just have to be a little patient and work the right way. So if you found this interesting and you would like to get my free Accelerator Singing video series, then go to the link that's actually in the description. It's a free singing accelerator video series that has three really, really, really great videos. Uh, and one is on the magic of vowels, which is paramount in mastering this stuff. So run over and get that. The other ebook that I have is a free ebook called The Five Biggest Mistakes That Singers Make When Singing in Their Mix or Belting and How You Can Avoid Them. And that link's in the description as well. So run over there and, uh, and grab those that as well. Really, really great free information that you won't find anywhere else. Um, well, I mean, you won't find those things of mine anywhere else. <laughs> you might find some information somewhere else, obviously. But uh, I'm probably not the only one that knows all this. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please, uh, if you enjoyed this, subscribe and uh, hit the bell for notifications. Comment. I love your comments. They're so educational for me. You guys have taught me so much and I really appreciate it. And thumbs up, please, if you like the video. Somewhere on this page, there will be recommended videos that are my own recommended videos. And uh, go check those out. And remember, I do a voice teacher reaction video on Wednesday and a technique follow up on Friday. So thank you so much, you guys. And I will see you really soon.